This week, we're back at Truman Lake in Missouri for Heartland's Elite event. I'll go. The best in the Midwest are angling for big purses on one of the nation's legendary bass fisheries. Don't go away. Big bass and big fun are coming up. At Coop. Truman Lake covers 56,000 acres in Missouri, and nearly every stretch of this man-made impoundment looks bassy. But those that fish Truman know that looks can be deceiving. Not every piece of cover here holds bass, so an angler must spend a lot of time looking for just the right area holding fish. And when you have a lake as big as Truman, finding just the right spot can be a daunting task. We're here on Truman in late May for Heartland Tournament Association's Elite Event. This tournament allows anglers to fish by themselves without an amateur partner. Not having a partner in the boat allows anglers to better concentrate on their fishing and gives them more freedom to try different locations. Increased payouts are another feature of the Elite Series and have helped to make it popular among Midwest bass fishermen. Our cameras will be rolling on four Truman Lake fishing experts for this event. Our four include Danny Burns of Ozark, Missouri, Mike Utzler of Springfield, Missouri, Jerry Pape of Lake Quivera, Kansas, and Junior Shin of Quincy, Missouri. All excellent fishermen with a boatload of experience on Truman Lake. Truman's lake level is slightly rising at 7.08, two feet above pool. Water temperature is between 62 and 74 degrees, with the warmest water found up the rivers. Water clarity is stained to murky in the main lake and dirty in river arms. The forecast calls for partly cloudy skies in the morning, with increasing cloudiness by noon. Temperatures are expected into the 80s by weigh-in. Danny Burns shares his game plan for the day. Uh, basically, I'm going to be fishing for post-spawn fish. Uh, most of the fish on the lake are post-spawn. I've heard there's a few that haven't. Uh, but the fish, the water's kind of colored, and uh, the fish spawned really shallow. Uh, the water's been coming up and down, so that's kind of messed them up a little bit. But the fish I'm finding are in four to eight feet of water, and uh, I'll cover that area a lot. I won't pitch uh, to the bank, per se, but I'll go to spawning areas where the bass have spawned, and I'll try to see where they've, uh, the post-spawn bigger fish have come out and stayed. We find Danny Burns near Long Shoal Marina. He's pitching a Red Shad Yum Hoo Daddy on a modified split shot rig to pole timber. His rig consists of a peg quarter ounce weight, 18 inch leader, and a four aught offset hook. He's using 15 pound fluorocarbon line. There he is. Good fish. Good fish. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Good fish here. Good fish. Come on, stay hooked. Yeah. There he is, first one. Thank you. We're going to blow out of here a little bit. Junior Shin is at the Starrett Creek Dike. My game plan is to catch a limit of fish off this dike and then go up the Grand or the Osage, and I haven't made up my mind yet which, because I got, I think I can catch fish in both places, but, but I wanted to catch a limit of fish off of this and, and that point right over yonder, but I'd be tickled to death with a couple off of this, so. Jerry Pape has run a mile up the Osage River. I got a buzz bait on first, and then, um, I'll probably mix it up a bunch so I can kind of figure out what they're doing a little bit. Uh, these fish, a lot of them should have, sh should have spawned. Some are just are in the act of spawning right now. This water's come up about a foot in the last couple of days. Oh my! Yeah, there he is. There he is. Oh God! Areas like this right here, where you don't see many trees, a lot of people will skip over them. They're wanting to pitch the trees. <clears throat> At one time, there was as many trees here as there was anywhere, and there's stumps under there. And a lot of times, this will be one of your most productive areas. You can fish some stumps where that's not visual to everybody else. Mike Utzler starts off throwing a buzz bait in Long Shoal. He's already got his first keeper in the boat. There you are, little buddy. 
Make your boat safe and comfortable. No, he ain't a keeper anyway. He ain't a keeper anyway. Good grief. Ah. Well, we got a little bit of cloud cover. And I just want to try and, I'd like to really pick up an easy fish or two right off the bat. And a lot of times you can do that with a buzz bait. Because I know I'm not going to get throw up much later in the day. So, and it's a good little bank here. It's got the right kind of drop off on it to, for fish to be coming up here. A lot of times you run this buzz bait over a bed. And they just can't resist. They'll come up and hit it. So, Danny Burns takes some time to retie before getting back to fishing. Retying is something when you, especially early in the tournament day like now, when the excitement, the adrenaline's still going, and uh, it's hard to make yourself do. Uh, but, but you know, if you got everything on you, you can do it from 15 seconds to a minute. You can be retied and be pitching again. And when the bites are few and far between. That's not much to make sure you land your fish. I mean, you hook a hook a good solid fish, and and he breaks you off. You'll be sick about it, and it'll it'll affect your whole fishing day. The rest of the day, you'll be if you don't come back from it, you'll be not near as productive as you would have been if you'd just retied. Oh man, that was cute. You see that? You get to see that? Like that. Should have hit a little bit better though. With the sun climbing higher in the sky, Jerry Pate begins pitching a Texas rig lizard. Airborne. Back at Longshoal, Mike Usler boats another keeper, this time on a half ounce homemade watermelon jig. Back to Jerry Pape up the Osage. Right now, I'm hoping if I can just get five, then I can try and monkey around for something bigger. But right now, important thing on any of these, if you get five fish, you know, then you take your chances from there. But you got to get five first. And there are guys that do very well going for big fish. I just soon try and do whatever I can to get five in the boat. Danny Burns changes to a green pumpkin yum hoo daddy. He feels the more subtle color will work better in the stained water of this area. That could hurt. Danny Burns has moved near the dam. He's still pitching his modified split shot rig with the Yum Hoo Daddy. Well, this is the same type of bank. Uh, it's, a, it's a main lake bank with a channel. It's a little different, but it's got the same type of depth to it. I'm going to stay in that six, six and seven foot range, and I'm going to go down through here, and I'm trying to catch some post spawners. And uh, this bank will not get near the pressure where we just came from. So I'm just hoping that I can get up here and pick a couple off. And I know it's, it's windy, it's a lot windier out here, but it's going to get a lot more windy in the next couple hours. So if, I, if I'm going to do it, i got to do it now. Ah. Well, that's a mistake you make. Get distracted thinking about other things. You get a good fish swimming off with it, you set the hook and you miss him. Just enough to burn him. Little guy. Little guy. A little Kentucky. Come on. Get that little turd. Hootsler's got another one. on it. Tape's having trouble up the Osage. Export. Didn't take long. I don't think you'll make it. He just close, but no cigar. Nice little fat fishy. Back to Danny Burns near the dam. On a day like today, you know, all the boat was around is where we started. And uh, so we left. And then you go to your second bank and the wind's blowing on it. 
you get to the third bunch of trees you want to fish and there's three boats there and so you try to switch up and that's what I'm doing now but it's not working so if it doesn't work I'll just get right back in there and fish with everybody and try to catch them that's all I can do Junior Shin has moved to Happy Hollow Holy. Okay. Good Lord. Fire make. Danny Burns is now at the mouth of Tebow Creek. Junior Shin hooks up again on his white spinnerbait. Good grief. Yeah. Yes. That's Another fishless hook set at Tebow Creek. Jerry Pape's not faring any better in the Osage. Danny Burns has moved to the Grand River Arm a mile from takeoff. Back at Happy Hollow, Junior Shin has switched to a small chartreuse shallow running square build crankbait. Oh, there he is. Good guy, really. Naturally, I got him hooked. I'm old Kentucky. Little guy. Tape's still having difficulty locating a keeper. Junior Shin moves back to Starrett Creek to fish the dike. He's again fishing his chartreuse baby minus one crankbait. Oh, that one's a good one, too. Come up just one more time where I can see it. Oh, no. I measure him. Back to Danny Burns in the Grand River. <laughs> Some fish are in them bushes. We'll catch one right up there, you know what? That'll go. Good keep. With Wayne drawing near, Pape finally hooks a good one. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Not even if we need to do anything. Boys post spawn though. Look at look at the belly on him. I mean post spawn, that's what's making it tough. All right. Shin's got another one in Starrett Creek. He ain't very big, but he'll keep if I could get him over here. Good grief, come here. Well, good grief. This one came on a small white shallow running Strike King crankbait. Well, that's number four. After losing a fish from a flooded bush, Danny Burns decides to target this type of cover instead of the deeper pole timber. It's a net. I got him. <laughs> oh, baby. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Where's my net? Come here, baby. Uh oh. Ah. Yes. 
How about a fish in the bush, man? You ever call a bass in the bush? <clears throat> okay, I got my pliers. That fish will weigh four pounds, won't he? Oh, I had him hooked. I did everything I could to let him go, didn't I? Yes. Almost immediately after bushes have been flooded, bass will take up residence in the new cover, and catching them can be as easy as stealing candy from a baby. Unfortunately, Danny Burns may have stumbled on this pattern too late. You ain't gonna measure. What I wouldn't give for about an hour or two more time. The right set of bushes. With the tournament nearly over, Danny Burns is scrambling for another keeper. But this one won't cut it. Danny Johnston of Windsor, Missouri is the first to come to the scales with a good limit. 14.86. 14 14.86 pounds. Hold a couple up, Dan. He takes the lead, but is penalized for weighing in a dead fish. With the penalty, Johnston's at 13.86 pounds. Brad Butler of Blue Eye, Missouri, only weighs in three fish, but one is a 6.65 pound giant. Hold that biggest one up. That is a beauty. Larry Igedy of Warsaw, Missouri is five good fish and could bump Danny Johnston from the lead. 13, 92, 13.92 pounds, new leader. Igedy barely bumps out the leader with 13.92 pounds. Weighing in last, Jackie Davis of Willard, Missouri has a limit of bass that should make Larry Igedy nervous. He's got to be 13.92 to... Move Larry Igedy in the second place, and I think he's going to be able to do it. There's your new leader, Jackie Davis, Willard, Missouri, 15, 32. The winner of the 2004 Heartland Elite event on Truman Lake is Jackie Davis with 15.32 pounds. In second, Larry Igedy with 13.92 pounds. Igedy pitched a J&J &J jig to flooded grass up the Osage River. All his keepers came from less than a foot of water. Third goes to Danny Johnston with 13.86 pounds. Johnston fished flats with pole timber in 8 to 15 feet of water. His bait of choice was a 10-inch plum Berkeley power worm. Big bass honors go to Brad Butler with a 6.65 pound largemouth. Butler caught the bass on a green pumpkin chompers techno tube. Here's the best of the rest. Our on the trail featured anglers finished. When we come back, learn how first place finisher Jackie Davis caught his tournament winning limit. Don't go away. Hi, my car's Missouri 15 32. 15 boy 32 pounds. Hold up a couple of fish. <laughs> Jackie Davis won the 2004 Heartland Elite Tournament on Truman Lake by casting a black 3/8 ounce buzz bait with gold blades in one to three feet of water near Long Shoal. He shares a tip on how he modifies a buzz bait to increase hookups. Something special I do to my buzz bait uh, was to put a little kink in it. I, I made the, the wire, I bent it so the buzz bait will ride just a little bit. Now it's probably going to be about a half an inch deeper. The body runs in the water when you're cranking it in. And a lot of times those fish come up and bite short, and if the bait's a little bit deeper, they'll go ahead and suck it down. Instead of it being a real violent, vicious strike, they'll just, it just, it's a sucking noise, and they just suck it right down, and, and you got him. Next week, we're at Table Rock Lake for more Heartland Tournament action. More bass fishing tips and techniques, plus some exciting fish catches are in store. You'd be crazy to miss it. Heartland on the Trail, the most exciting television coverage of the Midwest's richest bass tournament.